stunning Mount Monganui, the venue for the opening game of the Women's World Cup. I've got Mel Jones here beside me. Mel, how much are you looking forward to this? We've had to wait a little bit longer because of COVID. <laughs> Is it going to be worth the wait? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the last time we saw each other in an ICC event, 86,174 at the MCG, and the Women's World Cup was just 12 months later, and then we get delayed because of COVID. Everyone's been waiting patiently. Uh, the fact we've got a new team in in Bangladesh as well just ramps everything up as well. A lot of good things has been happening in women's cricket. It's been growing exponentially. How important is it that this tournament keeps that going in the right direction? Yeah, hugely so on a, on a number of fronts. Uh, we were just chatting before we had one mum in the 2017 World Cup. We've got six now. So it's not just about the cricket. It's this ability to put on a platform to, to lead sport and show a new way forward to keep these magnificent athletes in the game for as long as possible and to see the best of them. So we're seeing some of our, our best players now getting into the, the 30s and mid 30s and still performing so well and that's because of the systems around them. Let's get on to England 2017 who can forget that great day at Lords Heather Knight lifting the trophy you've seen them recently mm -hmm. in the Ashes in this particular format what have they done well and where have they been short? Yeah look if you go back to 2017 and look at the games that they've played since then if you get down to the stats for all the boffins out there <laughs> Uh, dot ball percentage has actually worsened and their boundary percentage has actually worsened as well. So they're not finding those combinations that they'd really love to see gel at this World Cup at the moment. So that's going to be a challenge for them. But when you look at them, they've just got this experience playing. Nat Siver I saw over the summer was absolutely brilliant. Heather Knight I think is coming into her own and Catherine Brunt, well she'll be playing for the next 20 years I think by the looks <laughs> of things as well. So you know they've got the experience there. It's just a matter of how they can get them to gel over this tournament. And the one standout team, the rankings, it's Australia, Daylight, then the rest. You went on that 26 unbeaten run. Uh, it's a phenomenal side. The depth of the side is incredible. Any weak areas at all? Are they just standout favourites. Yeah, look, they've played 33 games, and which isn't a lot in comparison to a lot of the other teams since the last World Cup, and they've only lost two of them. And I think, Nass, you're right, it's, it's the depth that really gets them there. There's no uh, Molyneux, there's no Wareham, and there's no Valemic through injury, yet you just pick in a, a King of Wellington, and, and these players just keep providing. And then Natalia McGrath comes out and says, hello, I'm ready to perform so well. Um, so if anything, over the last couple of warm-up games, you, you, you might look at that bowling side of things, but in warm-ups you, you're bowling nine. So they're just getting through people at the moment just to make sure that they've got overs in their legs. Um, so at the moment, not a lot of weakness, but it is a World Cup. <laughs> yeah, and we're here in New Zealand, obviously, and the hosts are putting in a good performance so far. They beat India 4-1. They've just beaten Australia in a warm-up game. They, they look like a side that could challenge everyone in this tournament. And I think when you think about it, so Amelia Kerr, Susie Bates, uh, Sophie Devine and Amy Satterthwaite haven't played collectively together too many times over the last four years because of motherhood and injury and the like. They're all now in the side and Amelia Kerr now batting at three. So the last nine games she's averaging 76 against Australia, England and India. So that shift up the order is making that a really potent top order. I could go through all the sides. I mean, we haven't mentioned <laughs> South Africa, always there or thereabouts. India were finalists in 2017, were finalists uh, at the MCG in that famous T20 World Cup. I won't, but I will ask you, April the 3rd, Hagley Oval, final, which two sides will be there? <laughs> well, I'd like to say Australia, and I think I they will. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's, it's a real toss-up. Um, I would love to see New Zealand there. They were the hosts in 2000, and they won it, and they didn't really capitalise on that. Um, for them to really push cricket forward in the country, to see them in the final would be absolutely magnificent. Well, we may see them in the final. We'll definitely see them on Friday here in Mount Monganui. They're the start for the tournament. They take on the West Indies. And then the big game, the old rivalry, England-Australia, Saturday from Hamilton.